Welcome back to Houston Real Estate Radio on this Veterans Day. We're taking a break from real estate today and talking about um, ways to honor our veterans through organizations that are out there that do such a great job with this. I'm joined in the studio uh, with my co-host James Brown and also I have Dan Vargas in the studio. He is with Operation Finally Homes. Great organization. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. We talked about it last segment and we've got a special guest with us today, J.R. Martin. Martinez. Thanks for calling in, JR. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on, guys. So tell us your story, because there are a lot of people out there who don't know what a celebrity you are, and and, and really your story, what you've been through. Well, um, I joined the military right after high school, and I had several reasons of joining. I mean, I, I, I was 18 years old, and I looked at it as a great opportunity for me to learn a lot about life, to be able to travel, be on my own. I'd be able to go to college, you know, get the money for college at the same time. When I graduated from high school, it was in May of 2002, so a few few months after 9-11 happened, and um, I, I, I just felt there was a great opportunity for me to give back to a country that had given so much to me and my family. And so um, I joined in September 2002 as, as an infantryman, did basic till December of 2002. January of 2003, I reported to my unit, which was 101st out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and uh, March of 2003, uh, not even two months later, I found myself on a plane heading over to the Middle East, and, you know, it, it was real. I was 19 years old, and, and this was no longer, uh, this wasn't a, a movie that I was sitting at home watching. This wasn't a video game that I was playing. You know, this wasn't me sitting down listening to someone that's been there and done that. This is actually my journey, my story, um, my reality. And then on the 5th of April of 2003, I was driving a Humvee with three other guys in the vehicle with me, and my front left tire went over a roadside bomb. Um, it was an explosion. I was trapped inside the vehicle. Um, by the time I was pulled out, I sustained burns to over 34% of my body. Had inhalation damage, had fractures throughout my body, and um, was evacuated, put, put into a medical-induced coma, and from there was taken to, was brought to San Antonio, Texas, um, and where I got to work on my medical center. Four days after I was injured, and three weeks after I was injured, I came out of my coma and, uh, you know, saw a bunch of strangers standing in my room wearing green scrubs. It was all the doctors and nurses, and, um, you know, and that, that, that next morning after I came out of my coma, my doctor came into my room, and he pretty much broke it down for me. He says, he says this is going to be the plan. He says, at 7 o'clock in the morning, your nurse is going to come into your room and feed you. After that, your nurse will come into your room and put you on the shower bed and then take you to the shower and bathe you. But then he kept going on, and I blocked him out because I'm thinking to myself, I'm 19 years old, and I'm going to have somebody feed me. I'm 19 years old. I'm going to have somebody bathe me. I'm 19 years old, you know, and, and I thought to myself, you know, this might not be so bad after all because <laughs> I was 19 years old, and when I, when, when I heard of nurses and I saw them on TV, I mean, <laughs> pretty beautiful girls, you know, I'm just saying. And... uh you know, I thought to myself, hey, I'm going to score some points because she's definitely going to be older than me, so this is even better, you know. And then all of a sudden, this six-foot-something guy with a beard walks into my room and tells me he's my nurse. So as you can imagine, I completely was devastated. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it was tough. I mean, it was tough. When I saw my face and my body for the first time, you know, um, about a week after I came out of my coma, I mean, it was really difficult. 19 years old, I thought to myself, and I would ask everybody, including my mother, what, what, what life do I have now? I mean, honestly, what can I really do with my life? And um, my mother just said, you know, you have to believe that stay positive. You, you, you have to have faith. And over time, you'll get the answer. And, you know, it's one of the things that I say, we're human beings. And we have a tendency at times that when we can't see something or physically touch it, we feel like we've lost it. And, and, and we, we, we don't. There's a lot of things that we still have that we can't see or touch. And it's one of it is the ability to make a choice, and the other one is called hope, and, and, and the other one is called believing. The other one is called positivity. You know, those are things that, you, you know, you really can't touch. You can't physically hand over to somebody, and I just made a choice in that moment, guys, that I said, you know what? I am not going to sit there and let this beat me, and um, then a few months after I was uh, in the hospital, I was now an outpatient, and I was asked to visit a patient one day to mix my own recovery, and um, I noticed that I made a difference, and I felt, you know what? This is what I... This, it felt good, and that's honestly why I did it at the beginning, because it really felt good for me. It was my way uh, of, of, of going through my therapy. It was my way of coping with what I was going through, um, and it just felt right. And um, then I just started to say, you know what, I want to evolve, 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 and that's what I've been able to do. You should really tell that story in a book. 
<laughs> yeah. it's, it, well, luckily, full of heart, my book is out. Um, so, That's what we heard. Tell us about it. Yeah, so, you know, over the years, you know, it's funny because I, 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 I tell my girlfriend, I was like, I'm going to start calling myself the people's choice um, <laughs> because everything that I have done, everything that I've done in my career has been because of people encouraging me. My friends are just people in general encouraging me to try something. Um, it's really never been because I've been like, oh, I want to do that. Um, you know, and so people over the years have said, hey, we want you to write a book. We want you to write a book. We want to know more about your story. And, you know, I've, I've been blessed and had the opportunity to be able to write a book. And it, 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 today, actually, we are, you know, um, you know, it's been out for a couple of weeks now. And, and it's, it's called Full of Heart, My Story of Survival, Strength, and Spirit. Mm-hmm. And it's just, uh, it, it just it shows everything in there. I mean, it, it's not just about Iraq and about, you know, my recovery, but it's about the things I went through as a child, you know, the things that... I went through leading up to that explosion in Iraq that built the strength, built my core, and allowed me to be able to have the confidence and the belief that I can overcome anything. Um, and and so and I and I just want people to understand that, you know, changes happen in life, whether we choose them to or whether it's, it's just life. It's unpredictable, and you know that's what happens with these service members. You know, they 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 they're doing they're trying to do the right thing, and change happens in their life. You know, unexpectedly. Um, and, and we have to remind ourselves as individuals and we have to remind our service members and their families that at the end of the day, we're there for them. And we're going to help them do two things that a lot of people sometimes don't ever figure out how to do, adapt and overcome. And we're going to allow them to understand that they can adapt and overcome in this new setting that they're in, whether it's having physical injuries, whether it's um, you know maybe just having you know, a traumatic brain injury or a PTSD or, or even coping with the fact that, you know, when service number is gone, we're here for you, and we're going to help this transition be as smooth as it possibly can be because we're here together and we, we support every single one of you. And I think that's a pretty special thing. I do too. So tell us about your connection with Operation Finally Home, because we have Dan here in the studio, and um, he told us earlier about his connection to it. What is your connection to it? Well, um, you know, as Dan mentioned, you know, um, he and I have been friends for eight years, and we've supported each other. And, and you know, if he call, calls me and says, hey, I'm doing this, I support him. And, and if I call him, he supports me. And, and, and I've had the opportunity to meet the founder, um, Dan Walworth, plenty of times. And he's just a great man, you know, a uh, great Christian man that just wants to do the right thing and, and, and use his own resources. And um, and for me, what it, came, what it comes down to is I was injured in 2003. And in 2003, 2004, 2005, even a little bit of 2006, I mean, the, the way people would show the love and support for service members was, was simply, you know, let's take them out to a ball game, let's take them out to dinner, let's, let's take them on a trip, things of that nature. And all those things are great. It's a nice break from the routine that these service members and their families are going through. However, we've learned that, you know what, now we have to kind of switch. And one of the things you start kind of seeing a lot is homelessness. Um, and, and, and homelessness is, is for is happening for a different reason. It's because of the fact that, you know, guys are dealing with a lot, and 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 they they, they don't they, they don't get the help that they they possibly can get in order to, to deal with those issues. But then a lot of it is because of unemployment. Now I know unemployment is a very big issue amongst in the country in general. But when you talk about you know unemployment reaching 13 percent, you know um, the unemployment ratio when it comes to our service members, and there's less than one percent that actually serve in our military. That's a lot of people. And what it is is honestly, these guys don't know what they can do. Um, when they get out of the military, how they're trained in the military to really transition and help them get a job in the civilian world. So for me, when I found out about what Operation Finally Home was doing, not only just building homes and giving these individuals the opportunity to be able to have a, have a home, own a home, and that's one less thing they have to think about and worry about, but more importantly, that they're able to build a 300, you know, 300, but it probably cost $300,000, you know, to build a custom home for the service member and everything. They're able to build it for about, you know, sixty, seventy-five thousand dollars because of the fact that they're getting a lot of support from the builders, from donors, um, mm-hmm. from people just saying, "Hey, we're going to give you this. You don't have to actually have to buy it." And I just look at that and I just say, "Wow, you know, look at the money they're able to save on the front end, so on the back end they can build more homes." And we've seen that effect happen. In 2009, it was only maybe you know a dozen homes that were being built, and now. I think it's up to like, you know, 40s or something like that. You know, we're kind of expanding outside of Texas. So for me, I just love the fact that Operation Finally Home, there's not a lot of overhead. There's not a lot of people on staff, you know, which is great. So you know the money is going towards 
the program to build a home. Right. The fact that they worked tirelessly and, and endlessly to be able to get the contractors and, 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 and all these individuals to donate a lot of the material and then to be able to build a home for $75,000 that would cost 300000 or so. That, that, to me, is a pretty special thing. And um, and it, it's a great organization. It's still young. It's still going to do a lot of great things. And so for me, it, it's not only my best friend as the executive director, you know, Dan Vargas, but um, I just believe in the whole organization itself, and, and I believe in, in the foundation and what they do every single day. And that's why, for me, uh, I'm, I'm great to say, I, I'm happy to say that I'm part of the, part of the program. That's fantastic. And, Dan, uh, tell us who some of your greatest supporters are for the organization. Well, I, you know, I can't say enough about a lot of the builders. We, we've been very blessed. Uh, one of the greatest ones is, is uh, Eddie Martin and Tilson Homes. Uh, they're on their fourth home with us. Uh, we have Jimmy Jacobs Customs Homes out of the Hill Country, the Greater Houston Builders Association, uh, Bay Area Builders Association. We have the Houston Texans. We're getting ready to launch a huge program uh, with Louisiana Pacific nationwide. Um, they're going to do six homes. We've, uh, we've done homes with Pulte here in Texas. Um, uh, dynamic so some builders. of them are national builders, and so they're able to help in other states. Yeah, exactly, uh, which is huge. Pulte has done uh, – they're they've – done one home in Fort Worth, can we do a second, but they're also doing a home up in Michigan that we teamed up with Kid Rock uh, up there with him. He wanted Very to bring nice. the home program to his, he says, I want to help my neighbor. Mm-hmm. So if you can do a home in okay. Michigan, I'll do it with you. And, and we did. Wow. Um, so that's the great thing that, you know, this is, this is easy. It's not rocket science. This is an industry. I mean, the builders industry is, is red blooded Americans. You know, it's hard workers that build homes. And if we can get the home market back up the way it was, that's when America is going to recover. And that's what this program is about is, is a 21st century barn raising. This is neighbor helping neighbor, grab your tools, come over. Let's get our neighbors back on their feet and, and down the road to build a new life. Well, tell us, um, you know, if there are people out there who want to donate to the organization or just want to learn more about it, how can they reach you? Uh, our website is operationfinallyhome.org. Uh, you can go on there. All of our information is on there. We have a major program that kicked off today with Kick Brooks that we're doing nationwide in Louisiana Pacific, and we have a text-to-give number. So if you text OFH to 85944, uh, you can do a $10 donation. So that's one trip to Starbucks that you can change a life. Go ahead and give us that one more time. Uh, OFH to 85944. So they text that number, put in OFH, and it automatically... Right on your phone bill. Wow. On your cell phone bill. That's easy. Yeah, Everybody so, out there can do that right yeah, now. Yeah. And, and Make th- a difference. And that's what this is, is. This is a community partnership. When we come in the community, it's not just building a home. You know, we need... Uh, we just did a home uh, a couple weeks ago down in Houston in Alvin. Uh, the church came out and did all the landscaping. Um, we had uh, one of the elementary schools did a penny drive, and, and they raised funds to, to help build the home. So it doesn't take something big. It doesn't be like, well, I don't have enough to give. It's just small things, you know, right. coming over and helping neighbor. It's just helping neighbor helping neighbor. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dan Vargas with Operation Finally Home, for coming on and tell us about, telling us about the organization and sharing it um, with our community. And uh, J.R. Martinez, we appreciate you calling in and sharing your story with us as well. Well, no, thank you guys for the opportunity to be able to, you know, give us uh, an outlet. So uh, thanks to you guys, thanks to your producers, thanks to all your staff, and, and to everyone listening. You know, I just I just ask you to ask yourself this one question. Ha- have you done enough? Because I'm, I ask myself that question all the time, and the answer is no, I haven't. There's always more that I can do. And uh, I just encourage you guys to, you know, find a way. There's always a way. If you're just joining us and you miss most of the show, you can watch the videos at HoustonRealEstateRadio.com, and we're also now on iTunes, and you can find us on Facebook. I'm Shannon Register. I'm James Brown. And we thank you for joining us this very special Veterans Day. <laughs>